All right, and it looks like we are live. Uh, today is July the 11th, halfway through the month of July already. Um, it's been an amazing month so far. My name is Junior, and I just wanted to welcome you all back to the Daily Digital, uh, the one show where we keep you all well informed what is going on in our digital world around us. And today I just have a few things that I want to go over with you all. Uh, a couple of interesting things like the James Webb telescope uh, that was launched into orbit, I believe, in December around Christmas time, uh, as well as Kanye West coming out with possibly coming out with his own vehicle. Um, I think maybe even in partnership with Elon Musk on the uh, on the electric vehicle side. Um, and then a little story behind the scenes of what's going on with the Board Ape Yacht Club. So uh, definitely stick around for that. And we also, since today is Monday, we also have to do our word of the week uh, just to keep you guys, again, all well informed of what's going on in this digital world around us. So stay tuned and we will jump right into it. All right, so the first topic of discussion today is going to be all about NASA. NASA has launched the James Webb Telescope uh, way back, again, like I said, I think it launched in December of 2021, uh, right around Christmas time. And it's been in orbit not that long, but it has already been able to capture a lot of footage uh, and bring back to us a lot of footage from space. And today, July the 11th, they did a sneak preview of what was taken from the telescope, as you can see here. Um, and this is a lot, a lot better. I think it's the first one that's in color. Um, uh, it's really more refined than the Hubble Space Telescope that's been around. Uh, I think the Hubble has been out since like 1990 or something like that. So... In my opinion, um, this is definitely good news. I am definitely waiting for what's going to happen tomorrow, as you can see here, Tuesday, July 12th, beginning at 10.30 a.m. Uh, during a live NASA TV broadcast. They plan to broadcast the rest of the um, first full color images. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many images were actually taken, but they plan to go ahead and broadcast the rest of them tomorrow. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what's going on. Uh, I know a lot of people are actually waiting for this footage. So, all right. And so the next thing here would be all about, again, Kanye West. It looks like Kanye West is coming out with a Donda foam concept car. Uh, a lot of people aren't really too pleased with basically what's going on with this. Uh, I don't know. It was a tweet from Kanye West. Uh, from Donda, I should say, uh, which is his company. And it states on here that Stephen Smith, with tw 37 years of experience in sporting goods, footwear, military electronics, and apparel design, is appointed as head of Donda Industrial Design. Um, and then it's following that tweet, there is a silhouette image, all black image of a vehicle uh, with like really, really big tires. Doesn't look like anything that we've seen before as far as cars go. And it says Donda Foam Vehicle, conceptualized, designed, and manufactured all in the United States, A to the men. So, in my opinion, I don't know if Kanye is just kind of reaching a little bit too far here. Um, he's done a lot in the music space. Uh, he's done a whole lot in the, in the fashion space. Um, I, I mean, heck, he even once tried to run for president. He may even still try to run for president, uh, which would be quite interesting in itself. But will he actually jump into the vehicle or the automotive industry, I should call it, um, as a automotive designer uh, coming out with a foam vehicle? That's it's going to be really interesting. Again, if you look at this image here, um, it's, again, nothing like we've ever seen before. But I don't know. I mean, if, if a car is fully out of foam, would there be less accidents? I mean, imagine a car going down a road um, and then it bumps into another car. It'd be pretty much kind of like bumper cars where they just bounce off of each other. Um, a lot of components will shake and rattle and stuff like that, but you know, it, it, it wouldn't cause too horrible of a fiery crash or anything like that. So we have to just wait and see. This is really just a waiting game at this point. Uh, he just really put that out there as a teaser for us all to let us know what he possibly might be working on. Um, so we'll wait and see. Alrighty, 
So now I want to do the word of the week. And the word of the week this week will be adapt. Dapp spelled D-A-P-P. -P, um, and that is just basically a decentralized application. Uh, before we get into what an actual DAP is, we need to first understand what decentralized means. And that just essentially means that we have, uh, where is it here? Okay. Uh, so that is just essentially means that we have a application or a process or a system, uh, a company or what have you that does, ha does not have one central governing body. So for example, if you think of a bank, if you ever want to uh, take money and give it to somebody else, more than likely you have to go through a bank or if you want to use like a credit card, um, Visa, MasterCard, what have you, you have to go through the bank first and then the bank will transfer that money over to uh, whoever you're paying. So it's kind of like a middleman that you always, always, always have to go through. Uh, even Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those social media companies that are available are considered centralized companies because if I post something on Twitter, it has to actually go to Twitter's servers or Facebook servers it has to go through them before it gets spit out to the rest of the world. Uh, with decentralized now, it's a little bit different to where we have a bunch of uh, different nodes, a bunch of different computers working together uh, that is no longer just one governing body, but more like a community of governing bodies. So uh, think about it as a company just having a president um, of the company and everything goes through him is there's like some sort of hierarchy or her I should say uh, there's some sort of hierarchy that goes through him or her but now instead we remove the president and now all we have is just a bunch of managers that's managing different teams so that's more of a decentralized system so what you would then have is if the let's say for example um, uh, Mark Zuckerberg he owns Facebook if Mark Zuckerberg ever dies God forbid there's going to something's going to happen to Facebook and Facebook may now no longer cease to exist. Right. Uh, but if you have a whole bunch of managers, uh, if one of the managers dies again, God forbid, but the company will still continue to move on. Everything will conceal, still continue to function. Nothing will really have been lost uh, except the precious life. Um, and then again, we have a dis distributed um, system in which pretty much everybody runs everything, um, which in my opinion works only pretty well if you have certain needs for that. Um, to me, decentralized works in my opinion, again, the best, just because you don't want everybody just running amok, doing whatever. If you're trying to, if you're trying to build a house or something like that, and let's say the concrete person does not go when they're supposed to um, put the foundation down on and you got the woodworker that's there trying to build the top of it and then you got the roof worker there and you got somebody to paint and there's no walls to paint and everything just happens uh, without any order or any structure you will never actually get the house done there needs to be like some sort of structure in place in order for you to um, uh, be able to create that house all of the managers need to be at least in communication uh, so that everything runs pretty smoothly. All right. So for a decentralized application, uh, it is similar to that to where the app no longer just goes and gets like, again, Twitter, Facebook, the app no longer just goes to one central server. It actually goes and gets run on the blockchain. Majority of the time is going to be Ethereum, uh, but everything runs on the blockchain to where now these applications can be open source and these applications can be utilized by pretty much anybody anywhere uh, they have control now over their own uh, content because they are able to put that out there onto well actually i want to take that back i want to take that back because when you put something else on the blockchain it's going to go through different nodes um, and if you delete it on your end, it's still going to exist on the other node. So you really can't actually just delete it. Um, and, but at least you don't get to have it deleted for you as far as like Twitter and Facebook. If they don't like your post or something like that, Twitter or Facebook will just go ahead and delete the post, you know, just because, you know. Um, so there's different advantages and different disadvantages of them. Uh, one being... Uh, here they use smart contracts to complete transactions uh, between two anonymous parties without the need to rely on any central authority. Um, one disadvantage uh, is the ability to scale. 
So it's kind of hard to scale that way when you have one person just uh, guiding the lead and we have one leader of the pack, it's really easy to get far. Uh, but then when you have multiple people working at multiple times, everything needs to happen simultaneously. And if it doesn't, it's kind of um, a negative side in my opinion in that case. So um, that's just one thing I just want to mention to you all. There's a lot of dApps that have been popping up around there. Um, if you work for a dApp, that's awesome, it's amazing. Because uh, in my opinion, everything should be ran by the people. Uh, there should be a large community of people that are able to work with their own content, work with their own businesses, uh, do peer-to-peer -peer transactions and everything so that people have now have more control over uh, what's going on inside of their world. Alrighty. So now the next thing that I want to talk about is the Board Ape Yacht Club Metaverse. Um, they did a stress test. I think I mentioned this in another episode. They did a stress test uh, up to like 2,000 people all at one time inside their version of the Metaverse. Uh, they want to get up to about 10,000 or 12,000 people all at one time being able to utilize their Metaverse. Um, and the reason why I like this a whole lot, not just because Board Ape Yacht Club, um, they, they, Yuga Labs is the company that created it. Um, they've been doing a whole lot, you know, the past few months, uh, as far as like their NFTs and stuff like that. Um, but the reason why I do like this a whole bunch is because, um, their metaverse from what I've seen looks a little bit more realistic than the pixelated metaverse from, uh, the sandbox or Decentraland. Um, Decentraland sandbox, those are two other metaverses. Uh, that exist they've been out for quite some time uh over a year actually uh that really gained, gained the popularity as far as like last year goes um but they're actually working with sandbox uh the company that created sandbox is uh i want to say it starts with an a there it is uh animoca brands animoca brands they were the ones that uh, came up with the um uh, the sandbox metaverse and it looks like they are working together with the board eight yacht club to create the other side metaverse and other side metaverse again is I think in my opinion is going to actually be pretty cool uh, it's going to look actually amazing uh, and I just want to kind of give you guys an insight on that so just in case if you want to start investing early on into a metaverse that may pop in the next couple of uh, months or even years uh, again, Board Ape Yaka has been doing an amazing job uh, with making their NFTs grow. Uh, they came out with ApeCoin back in, I think it was like March, April or something like that as well. Uh, and I feel like they've been doing good on that side as well. Um, so if you go to OpenSea, you can kind of see here some of their metaverses. Um, and they've actually already been selling. These are, I guess, the cheaper ones here. <laughs> it's cheaper. Uh, 2.95 ETH, which comes out to be like seven grand. Oh no, uh, 2.95 ETH, about three grand. There was one I saw that was like seven grand. I must have been like close to five or six ETH. Um, the one I saw that just recently sold for like 42 ETH. Uh, let's say price low to high. Let's say, uh, let's just change this to recently sold. Yeah, this one's 3.8 ETH. This one's 30 ETH. Um, 0.4, 22.5. So the land is already selling a good deal, a good amount. Uh, they airdropped a bunch before, um, but now you can, I believe, just go ahead and purchase these directly from OpenSea. Uh, just have to set up your wallet and everything. Um, wow, I don't, I don't know. That sell for 748 ETH? That's amazing. 21 ETH here. I mean, these lands actually do look pretty good. What you can actually do with them inside the metaverse is we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but again, as an investment standpoint, you get into some digital real estate and you can actually grow your investment portfolio with that as well. So I just want to make sure that you guys are aware that this is available to you. Alrighty. And then the last thing here um, is just something for the gentlemen, something for the guys out there. Um, just kidding ladies of course can use this too they actually probably use this quite a bit but guys listen up very closely here 
but there is now or i don't say now because it's probably existed for quite a while i've just now ran into it uh, but there is a app in which you can test your ring size using uh, there's actually two of them there's one that's using the actual ring itself or if you can excuse me or if you, you can uh, do it you can use your own hand and do it through ar technology so these are two youtube videos i just want to kind of show you guys but i'm so i'm going to play them here real quick all right so here is the first one here uh ring sizer app i believe you can get it in the app store i haven't checked for it myself um but you know you'll probably find it out there somewhere and what it just looks like if you take a ring you actually put it on your phone screen and it kind of registers what it might be uh or you gotta looks like you gotta change the size on it there and just kind of bring it up to size um based on what the actual ring is which is uh is pretty cool um that way you don't have to have you know an actual ring sizer uh machine or ring ring sizer device on you or anything like that to figure out what your ring size is and then the other one here is actually another one which is more like an ar augmented reality uh, type of app in which you can actually just go ahead and put your hand up in front of your phone screen and let it do the work for you um, so as you can see here just basically states to go ahead and follow all the instructions as told uh, put your hand up in front of the screen uh, make sure that the background is still blank and it's going to basically register how far away your hand is from the uh, from the phone uh, so basically a depth of field and that's going to capture an image of it and try to process what the size of your ring actually is or your ring finger i would say uh actually is so in this case this person's hand uh is a 9.5 and then it looks like they went ahead and tested it check it out that's the ring sizer um uh what's it called ring sizer device there and they went ahead and tested it out and it looks like it fits perfectly so whether those two actually really work the way they're supposed to i am not sure i haven't downloaded the app um don't really have a reason or need to at the moment but to all the people that's out there who may be into jewelry and need to use it uh, it may come in handy so definitely check out the links below in the description let me know what you think of all of this stuff and uh, as always you guys have a wonderful rest of your day see you all tomorrow